So in continuation with our discussion of project management, software project management, there are certain shortcomings of uh, basic and intermediate Kokomo models. And what are these shortcomings? First of all, these uh, both models, basic and intermediate, they consider software product as a single entity, single homogeneous entity. But what happens in most of the large system, they are made up of uh, several smaller subsystems. And these subsystems, they may be, you know, organic type, they may be semi-detached, they may be considered to be embedded. And some of the reliability requirement, this uh, reliability may be high and so on. So, a varied kind of uh, formation is there. So, we have complete Kokomo. What it does is that it computes the cost of each subsystem separately or distinctly. And the cost of subsystem, then they are added to obtain the total cost. And this actually reduces the margin of error in the final estimation. If uh, we just talk about, uh, say, a management information system for an organization having number of offices at several places across the country, then we can have a database part, we can have graphical user interface part and communication part, for example. So this data part would be a semi-detached one. This considered to be a GI can be considered to be an uh, organic uh, subsystem. And communication part can be an embedded subsystem. See, cost of components, they are separately computed as I suggested earlier. And then they are summed up to achieve that or find a final cost. Then Helsteed, it is an uh, analytical technique he proposed to estimate the size and the effort and time. And most of these, uh, of course, we have seen in Kokomo also, with size, they have computed the effort and time, etc. So these are the uh, values he has proposed, but let us see what his primitive uh, program parameters are. And uh, as he suggested, they are number of operators and operands. And we can have derived expressions for overall uh, program length, the, the potential minimum volume. You can also compute the actual volume, the language level, the effort, and finally the development time. So if uh, this eta will be the unique operator used in the program and eta2 will be the unique operands used in the program. And n1 is the total number of uh, operators and n2 will be the total number of operands in the, in the program. So first is uh, this one which is the estimated length. And then we can compute the volume also. Let us take an example. This is a C program, simple C program. In this uh, three values are uh, scanned or taken by the user. And then average of these three values are being printed. So what are the unique operators here? You know what operators are. Unique means uh, atomic means in uh, these cannot be you know subdivided. So they are that is why we are calling it, it as atomic. Main right, right from main and these uh, you know uh, round brackets, curly brackets, int, scanf and then you can have you cannot uh, you know uh, compute this uh, twice because this has already been covered. Then all these like this till printf we can have as the unique operators. So we just uh, try to count them and this will be 12. And uh, what about the unique operands? We have a, b, c are the variables. M percent a is again an operand. And then a plus b is an uh, unique operand. Percent d, percent d, percent d. This is a unique operand. This is also a unique operand. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. These are the eta 2. Eta 2, number of unique operands. Eta 1, number of unique operators. So these are the values. We place it in this formula to compute the estimated length. And just uh, putting the values, we come to a conclusion that the estimated length would be 81. What would be the volume? So we can just multiply this n, this capital N, that is the length, into the log of eta. And we just combine them, you know, 12 plus 11, that is 23. So volume would be 366. So this is how Helsteed proposed. And then staffing level estimation, how it, this can be estimated. So number of personnel which are required during any development project, they are not constant at all. So Norden, he analyzed various R&D projects and he observed that the relay curve represents the number of full-time personnel required at any time. Norden, he proposed this expression. And we will see all these. So the Rayleigh curve from uh, these T and TD means this TD and effort and K constant and time. The Rayleigh curve is specified by two parameters. If this is a Rayleigh curve uh, between effort and time, this TD, TD is like this, you know, D is in subscript. 
So TD is the time at which the, the, the curve reaches its maximum. And what is K? K is the total area under the curve. So this will be a function of K and TD, right? As we have seen here, K and TD. This is what he proposed. Then Putnam also uh, studied the problem of staffing of software projects. And he observed that the level of effort which is required in software development efforts, it ha also has a similar envelope as we saw in Relay. So he found that this Relay Northern curve, it also relates to the number of delivered line of code. It is relating, he also uh, found out the relationship of the number of delivered line of code to effort and development time. So this is what he proposed. L is equal to CK, K to the power 1 by 3, TD to the power 4 by 3. So he analyzed large number of army projects. And he derived this expression. And this K is nothing but the effort expended. L is the size in KLOC. This TD, what, what you are uh, witnessing here, is the time to develop this software. CK is the state of technology cost. And it reflects the factors that, the, that is going to affect the programmer productivity. So let us see what this CK, uh, we can have a various environment. For a poor development environment, where there is no methodology, documentation is very poor and no reviews, CK is 2. For a good software development environment where these uh, principles of software engineering are employed, CK is equal to 8. And for an excellent environment, CK can be taken as 11. So for Relay curve, you know, very small number of engineers are actually needed at the beginning of the, of the project as we have seen like this. No? So initially, for carrying out planning and specification, less number of engineers are needed. But as the project progresses, the, uh, you know, work, a more detailed work is required or you know uh, is implied then number of engineers they also slowly increase till the till we reach the peak so putna observed that the time at which this relay curve reaches its maximum this maximum it corresponds to the system testing and product release at this this is the phase system testing and product release and after the system testing the number of project staff falls till the installation and uh, product installation and delivery, delivery time. The relic curve we have seen and we observed that approximately 40%, 40, you know, 40 percent is here and 60 percent is here. This is uh, uh, the same expression we have just, uh, you know, presented. This K, we know that the total effort in uh, PM percent month in the product development and this L was the project product size in KLOC. TD was, uh, it corresponds to the time of time system and integration testing. And this CK is the state of technology constant. We saw this uh, CK to be 2, 8, 11. And uh, it reflects the constraint that, the, that impede the progress of the program. And you can easily uh, re replace or I can say that you can uh, format different, different uh, in, in a different formation this expression to find K. And if we place K here, then it will be L cube by C K cube T D cube. Or you can have various other formation. We can just take this this as a say C because uh, for the same product size, this is going to be constant. So if we divide them K one by K two, this will be only because we have taken this as a constant. So it will be T by T means K one by K two will be equal to T D two by T D one. So these are inversely proportional. So cost would be inversely proportional to the time T D. Okay, so the project development effort is equally proportional to the project development cost also. And we observe that the, for uh, the relatively small compression in delivery schedule, this can really result in substantial penalty on human effort. If you want to compress the delivery schedule, because this always happens that uh, the customer or the end user would want that do it fast, do it just now. The benefits uh, can be gained by using fewer people over a somewhat longer time span. This would be good. Just by these expression uh, we presented, the estimated develop development time is uh, one year. Then, uh, in order to develop the product in six months, the TD, okay, that will be half a year. So just four times you make it, you know. So the total effort and the cost increases by sixteen times to the power four is sixteen. So the relationship between the effort and the chronological delivery time it becomes highly nonlinear, right? It becomes highly it means you know just by six months it will become sixteen times effort and cost will increase by sixteen times. Putna uh, model also indicated that uh, extreme penalty for for this schedule compression and extreme reward for uh, expanding the schedule. And Putnam estimation model works uh, 
very good for very large system but it seriously overestimate the effort for medium and small systems then bohem he also observed that there is a limit there is a limit beyond which the schedule of the project you cannot reduce just by uh, you know recruiting more people and buying more resources and equipment and he also suggested that this limit occurs roughly at 75% of the normal and time estimate what it says is if a project manager accepts the end user demand to just uh, compress the development time by more than 25% then it is sure that highly unlikely this project is going to succeed so every project has only limited amount of parallel activities that is why these things are true the sequential activities they cannot be speeded up just by hiring number of additional engineers engineers because they are going to sit uh, idle only then came the jensen model this is uh, also very similar to putna model and what it attempts is it attempts to soften the effect of schedule compression on effort if you want to compress the schedule then what effect it is going to uh, have an effort and it also makes it appl applicable to the smaller and medium size projects which earlier models were not doing so this jensel model uh, as i said that it is applicable to uh, it makes itself applicable to smaller and medium size projects so he proposed this expression that uh, l is equal to cte td kilo per half where this cte is nothing but the effective technology constant td as we have seen this is the, this is the time for development k is again the effort needed to develop the software so in contrast to the putna model jensen model consider the increase in effort and of course the cost required to be the proportional to the square of degree of compression not to the power four then we come to organization structure first is functional organization these engineers which we hire or for a, for a company for a software development so they are organized into the various functional group depending upon the function they perform for example one group performs specification the other goes for design the third is coding then comes the testing and there, there is a team which does the maintenance so engineers from functional groups they get assigned to different projects not only for one project what is the advantage of this functional organization first you have specialization a testing person will do testing only ease of staffing you know where and when to whom to put where and then we can easily produce good documentation because different phases are carried out by different teams of engineers and you know the errors can also be identified quite in earlier stage then this project organization in the formation engineers get assigned to project for the entire duration of the project in terms of when we are talking about project organization these uh, these personnel they are assigned for a to a project for an entire duration same same set of engineer carried out all the phases right from the specification to maintenance there is certain advantage that engineers save time on learning details of every project you know you, do, you don't have to go to each and every project first learn and then try to uh, put your skills and also it leads to job rotation then this team structure of the formation that there are, are problems of different complexities and sizes which are which uh, requires different team structures first is you can have a chief programmer team then you can have a democratic team mix organization these are the types of team structure so what can be a democratic team why uh, it is suitable where it is suitable so democratic team is suitable for small projects uh, you know just five or six engineers or less than that for that democratic team is good and these research these are research oriented projects these are suitable for so the manager it provides administrative leadership uh, with different times different members of the group provide technical leadership and this democratic organization it also provides what first is the high morale and job satisfaction to the engineers and it uh, leads to less employee turnover that is why because of this condition and this is also suitable for less understood problem because a group of engineer can just invent better solution from a than a single individual trying to do the same but there are disadvantages for this democratic teams team members they may waste a lot of time arguing about some trivial points which are just implicit and uh, there will be a problem of authority so absence of any authority in the team this is the disadvantage of democratic team and when it comes to chief programmer team there will be a senior engineer it provides technical leadership and he partition the the, the, the work or task among the team members and he also verifies and integrates the products which are developed by the members this is a kind of chief programmer team and this is the team it works well when the understanding of the task is good also within the intellectual grasp of a single individual 
it also has one peculiar property that the importance of early completion it outweighs other factors like team morale personal element etc you won't require it because you're actually completing the work this cheap programmer team is subject to single point failure how too much responsibility and authority is assigned to chief programmer team because he is the whole soul then we come to mixed control team organization and it draws the idea from both what we have learned like democratic organization and chief programmer team organization because we have seen both of them the communication is quite limited just to a small group that is more likely to benefit from it and for large large organization this is suitable right this is the chief programmer team structure this is a democratic team structure and mixed team structure is like this you know you have combined this combine this this is mixed team organization so what we have discussed in this software uh, part of software engineering uh, what we have discussed is that the broad responsibility of project manager for the software project management is project planning and project monitoring and control the estimation or to estimate the software cost first we determine the size of the product then using the size we determine the effort and then by effort we compute the project duration cost so first the starting point is size only we can use uh, various techniques cost estimation for that we have empirical technique heuristic and analytical techniques and for empirical techniques it is based on systematic guesses by experts so you can have a expert judgment and delphi estimation was also discussed for heuristic techniques we assume that the characteristic of software product can be modeled by mathematical expression like kokomo kokomo is a heuristic technique while analytical technique like hasty software science this derive the estimate starting with some basic assumptions like um, you know operands and operators etc then we talked about the staffing so staffing level during the life cycle of a software product development it follows a relay curve so maximum number of engineers are required during the testing phase integration and testing phase then relationship between schedule change and effort it is highly non linear sometimes it is to the power of 4 sometimes to, to the power of Two and software organizations are usually organized uh, organized in functional format and project format. So project teams can be organized in three uh, ways: chief programmer suitable for routine work, democratic suitable for small teams doing just R and D type of work, but mixed is required for large work. So I hope that software uh, engineering part of this session was beneficial for you. Thank you so much. Take care.